Ever wondered how to talk about family matters in English? How about the phrases linked to pregnancy and childbirth? This is what we'll explore in this video, focusing on English collocations. Now, what are collocations, you may ask? Well, they are combinations of words that frequently go together, enriching your vocabulary and making your English sound more natural. They're especially important when discussing sensitive topics like family. Dive into the world of English collocations with us today. Let's start with the phrase, get pregnant. The phrase, get pregnant, is used when someone is expecting a baby. For example, she got pregnant at 25. This phrase is incredibly versatile and fits into a myriad of contexts. Let's delve into a few examples. In an exciting reveal, one might say, after years of trying, my sister finally got pregnant. Or in a more serious tone, she didn't plan to get pregnant, but she's decided to keep the baby. This phrase can also be used in a more casual context like, my best friend got pregnant right after college. Sometimes it's used in a future tense, such as, they are hoping to get pregnant next year. Or in a past tense, she got pregnant last summer but didn't tell anyone until recently. Remember, this phrase is not confined to humans. It can be used for animals too, like, their dog got pregnant and now they have a litter of puppies. So, get pregnant refers to the beginning of the journey of becoming a mother. Up next, we'll look at to give birth. Give to give birth is a phrase used when a baby is born. For instance, she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Now let's dive into some examples. Imagine a close friend tells you, my sister is going to give birth next month. This means that his sister is expected to have her baby the following month. Or consider this sentence. The young woman gave birth in the taxi on the way to the hospital. Here, the woman unexpectedly had her baby in a taxi, not at a hospital as typically expected. We can also use this phrase metaphorically to express the creation of something new. For example, the Renaissance period gave birth to a new era of art and culture. In this sentence, the phrase is used to convey the idea that the Renaissance period led to the creation of a new era in art and culture. From to give birth, we move on to the term a single mother. Let's unravel this phrase next. A single mother is a woman who raises her child or children without a partner. For example, she has been a single mother since her husband passed away. This phrase is used globally to recognize women who take on the role of both parents. Let's dive into some examples. She became a single mother after her divorce. This sentence shows a situation where a woman is raising her children alone due to a dissolved marriage. We can also say the single mother worked two jobs to provide for her children, which illustrates a woman's dedication and hard work in fulfilling her children's needs. She is proud to be a single mother. Here, the phrase is used to express a woman's pride in her ability to nurture and raise her children independently. Another example is, the community offered support to the single mother, demonstrating how society can rally around these brave women. From a single mother, we will now explore the term to have an abortion. The phrase to have an abortion refers to the medical process of ending a pregnancy. For example, she had an abortion due to health complications. This phrase is often used in serious and sensitive discussions, so it's important to approach it with care. Let's look at some examples. In the context of a news article, you might read, the young woman chose to have an abortion after learning about the potential risks to her health. Or in a more personal conversation, someone might share, my cousin had an abortion last year and it was a difficult decision for her. In a medical or legal discussion, the phrase could be used as follows. The law allows for a woman to have an abortion under certain circumstances. Or a doctor might say, if the pregnancy continues, it could endanger your life. You may need to consider having an abortion. Our next phrase is to give the baby up for adoption. Let's look into this. To give the baby up for adoption means to legally allow another family to raise one's child. For example, she decided to give the baby up for adoption. This phrase can be used in many different contexts and sentences. Perhaps you're talking about a character in a book who faced a tough choice. You could say, in the novel, the young girl made the heart-wrenching decision to give her baby up for adoption. Or maybe you're discussing a historical event. During the war, many parents were forced to give their babies up for adoption to ensure their safety. In more casual conversation, you might hear something like this. They're not ready to be parents, so they're thinking about giving the baby up for adoption. Or in a more serious discussion, she's considering all her options, including the possibility to give the baby up for adoption. 
by using this phrase, you can express complex and emotional situations in a clear and concise way. Finally, we move on to the term due date. A due date is the expected day of a baby's birth. For instance, her baby is due in October. This phrase is quite versatile. Let's consider a few examples. They've calculated the due date to be the 22nd of June. Or perhaps, the doctor adjusted her due date after the ultrasound. Even in a casual context, it works perfectly. We're throwing a baby shower before the due date. That wraps up our exploration of English collocations related to family and childbirth. Remember, practice makes perfect.